that level. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Play Level Podcast. I'm your host, Pablo Man 44 Today's Monday again. Wow. Ah, man, I'm tired. I actually fell asleep with little Jacob, my youngest son, um, watching TV upstairs, and then he bounced. He left. I wake up, and it's like 9 o'clock, and I'm like, oh, no, where's Jacob? And he's gone. I'm like, oh, I got the podcast, the podcast. <laughs> So my eyes are a little, um, I just woke up right now. So maybe a little square of chewing gum might help me right now. Oh man, I'm running low. Maybe it won't help. Maybe I'll be smacking in your ears. Nonetheless, this is the play level podcast each and every Monday or Tuesday. Doesn't happen often. Almost happened today. I almost said, let's just do it Tuesday. Forget it. Gum was a bad idea. And now I'm gonna start choking. So yeah, sometimes it happens Tuesday because of scheduling with work or or a class or things happen. You know, I gotta switch it up a little. But it's either Monday or Tuesday. Today's Monday. It's happening today. This is the Play Level Podcast. We nerd out about the latest in gaming news, the latest in tech news, the latest in sports news. Whatever comes to mind, whatever comes across my eyes, whatever I, you know, during my weekly, you know, checking in on websites and all the different um, Twitter accounts and stuff I come across that I find to be newsworthy that I would love to talk about and um, we talk about it here we do that every Monday or Tuesday mostly Mondays so yeah that's what we're doing and I dropped my gum hold on okay it's fine we'll put it there (laughs) we'll have that in a second so welcome one one and all Oh, that's a good test. Let's, let's see how that comes out because I was watching one of my previous records. So, welcome, one, one and all. Oh, that's a good yeah. Test. It sounds doubled, so that I have to figure out. I definitely need to figure that issue out. Um. I, I don't want to dwell on it today because yeah, I have, you know, I have that thing where, you know, it's on, it's in my head. I got to figure it out right now because it's going to bother me. And now I'm chewing my gum, but I have to let it go and let it be. Let it be what it is and not stress over it because I could stress over it. I could sit here and try to troubleshoot the thing. But this is the play level podcast. And that's not what today's about. I also have been playing Genshin Impact. I got into that because. All right. Here they come again. I was um scrolling through things and I noticed. Wait, I didn't do what I was supposed to do to unlock Aloy. And I want to unlock Aloy. Yeah. Blue Dev one in the house. So yeah, I've been playing um Genshin Impact trying to, you know, do what it takes to unlock Aloy. And now from by the website, by you know, by the what I don't know if it's the website or it's on the game. I think it's on the game itself and the news thing or whatever they call it. There's an event on the 23rd that you know, it says from the 23rd, you I can unlock Aloy. Anyone on any platform or whatever who has the game can unlock Aloy. So I'm going to try to make sure I unlock Aloy on my PlayStation 5 and on my phone. Because then I want to use it. I like the game. The game is fun. So I make, you know, 
may start you know doing some stuff with genshin impact that's a fun game i got some games i need to play like that was on my list not a game to finish but that i needed to play more because i have it and i hadn't played much of it especially on console i was playing it on mobile but i, I wanted to play it on console but you know so silent hill um one i played live stream and um genshin impact i played you know my free time anything else no not yet i have the gta trilogy i haven't started it yet but um i'm gonna so that is uh coming up hold on let me do something quick right now got a third tab Oh, it's at 10.30. Okay. So, yeah. Ooh. The... Oh, that's that was a shellacking. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Looking at some sports stuff. Just had to check to see what time my game started. Um. So, yeah, that's what I've played for the past week. Blue Dev, what you been playing this week? I, why do I ask? I'm not gonna ask. Forget it. Forget I asked that question. You're gonna say 2K. That's all you're gonna say. You don't play anything else. You dedicate all your gaming time to 2K. I gotta level up. I gotta be 99 overall. You should play. Just create a shot creator or something. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> creator? I barely know her. Aw, oh, come on. At that moment. Wait, it stops all other sounds too? See, I fixed that and now it's back to that. Let's see. Boogie, boogie. We gotta press that. That one I can have a little louder than the other. It's not as loud. Oh, I like that sound. Okay, that one's good. All right. Yeah, no, Bulls versus Lakers. We beat the Clippers yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it was... Um, was there a Bulls versus Lakers? I remember Bulls versus Blazers. Was there a Bulls versus Lakers? Was there a Bulls versus Lakers game? Like, like the game like was called Bulls versus Lakers. I remember Bulls versus Blazers. But Bulls versus Lakers. I, I know they had several iterations of that game. That was um when, you know, what what is it? EA Sports made that game. They were into the basketball thing. And they were, they had the monopoly on, yeah, I know. Talk about the video game. They had the monopoly on the sports, you know, basketball games, and um, they made fun games that we love to play. But then when you got to the new technology, put in garbage right there. I think he just walked in, and some of my shells from my pistachios fell out the, the bag. Yeah, put it in the garbage. You think it was Genesis? Could have been. Um, when they got to, you know, as the generations rolled up, you know, they started to kind of tank. When they got to P PS3 and PS4 is when they really started to tank. Um, PS4, they couldn't, they couldn't come out with a game that people wanted to play for their for their life. PS3, 2K started, and 2K just was smashing them left and right. So then people people switched over to 2K. And it's been history since. It hasn't been a competitor basketball game since. Because nobody has nobody has come up with a game that remotely resembles actual basketball. Like they come up with games that are basketball games, but it doesn't have the look and feel of an NBA game. Like they'll they'll throw features at you like 
out the wazoo. Like you'd be like, oh, but you can do this on this one and you can do that one. You can't do that on 2K. 2K doesn't have this. But the way the player animations are, like the way they move around after they dunk, they're robotic. <laughs> and like they're weird looking. Everybody's like the same build. Nobody's fatter or skinnier or or more ripped or less ripped. Everybody is exactly the same. They're just different heights. <laughs> that's it. And that's not that's not realistic. You know? And like they would get character faces way off. So 2K owns that. So. But yeah. Um, you have been playing 2K, you admitted it, which is a sad, sad, sad affair. We're moving on. And we're going to talk about the stories of this week. What stories do we have this week? I like the song, but it's it's been playing. Let's play something else. Can turn this one down a little first story we have on the ledger let's get rid of um where is it no not that one no 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 oh there we go rainbow six extraction has a release date confront wait is that the first one no that's not that's not the first one we'll get back to that one this music is a little loud all right some segments of this song is a little loud all right there we go playstation 5 production has reduced again as covid19 continues to cause component shortages which is sad and annoying but it's a fact of life a lot of things are being affected still by COVID to all you people out there who don't believe COVID um, exists or um, that it's being blown out of proportion, but people are still getting sick. The virus is mutating. So take it serious and do the right things to make sure you're safe and people around you are safe, whether it's your friends and family co-workers or just you know strangers because strangers affect your friends and family and co-workers whether you want to believe it or not you have to care about strangers because strangers are the people who make your takeout food strangers are the people who sit next to you on a bus or train or an airplane or walking down the street strangers are the people who walk through a door and touch the door before you walk through a door and touch the door when you go into department stores and supermarkets and things like that you know strangers are people who you interact with without having to interact with them because they've interacted with things you are interacting with so things that are with them affect you regardless of if you want to you know take and take them into consideration or not so be safe out there Sony has reportedly reduced its estimates of the number of PlayStation 5 consoles it will be able to manufacture before the end of the year. According to Bloomberg, the reason for this is that the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic is still causing PS5 component shortages to continue. Sony was hoping to have manufactured 16 million PS5 consoles during the current fiscal year. However, issues with production, mainly component shortages and logistics constraints have meant this figure has now been revised to 15 million and makes it highly unlikely the company will reach its target of selling more than 14.8 million consoles by the end of March 2022. The information is not meant to be public right now, but was apparently revealed to the company's investors in a conference call from Sony's chief financial officer, Hiroki Totoki, at the end of October. Which sucks, because, you know, people leak stuff and they don't know how that affects people's daily lives. Like these people are going through some things. Like, it's their company and their company, you know, is being majorly affected. They're losing money basically because they can't, they can't get things produced. So they're not able to sell as much as they want to be able to sell. And that, you know, that throws a lot of things off. So some people get stressed out about that and people will just want to make a quick buck off a story off of it, which is kind of rude. Um, 
you know, don't leak stuff before, you know, like that. Don't leak anything before it's supposed to come out because really um, some people have plans for certain things to roll out or if like, like certain things leak early and it's not ready, then there's an expectation. And then, you know, then the company is under pressure that they shouldn't have been. Um, so the reason for the current sales target is so they could beat the number of units sold in console second in a, in a console second year. The record is currently held by the PlayStation 4 with 14.8 million units. Unfortunately, things haven't been going so well recently. During the same conference call, Totoki had said that while the PS5 was the fastest of Sony's consoles to reach 10 million sales during July, sales have since fallen behind the pace set by the PS4 console. Totoki had already warned that if the COVID-19 pandemic had a resurgence, a component shortage was likely. This is mainly due to the global nature of console manufacture. Many of the console's parts are manufactured in developing nations where vaccine rollouts are inconsistent, meaning labor shortages have led to lower production levels. Despite continued communication between manufacturers and those that assemble the consoles, parts aren't always arriving on time either. Other companies like Toshiba had already predicted chip shortages could affect console manufacturing until 2023, making it unlikely Sony will then go on to break their own annual console sales record between April 2022 and March 2023. Sony was hoping to sell more than 22.6 million units during this period, breaking the record held by the first PlayStation console. But if shortages continue, then this ambition seems like quite a challenge. That sucks because if there wasn't a global pandemic right now, so maybe we blame Xbox. Maybe Xbox had something to do with COVID. No, I take that back. I take that back. They wouldn't do that. They wouldn't stoop that low. They wouldn't go that far. Or would they? No. <laughs> Anything bad that happens, I blame Xbox. You know, it's their fault. They're messing things up. And most of the time, it's the truth. <laughs> like with Minecraft. Okay, but no, that's that's that sucks, man. Cause, all right, I'm not gonna chew the gum. I chew the gum. I can't talk. You can't do a uh, a podcast and chew gum at the same time. It's not that you're not able to talk. You're just not able to 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 properly speak without, and then you're salivating, so you're gulping. So no, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. But that sucks. You know, I know I'm not an investor. I mean, I'm invested, but I'm not an investor. I don't financially have ties to PlayStation or Sony or anything. I'm just a fan of the consoles. I'm a fan of the games. I'm a fan of the company. And, you know, I have a heart. So I feel for them as a company because I would think if I had a company rolling, and making money and then my money started getting messed up because because of things out of my control and there was nothing i can do about it like there's nobody you can fire or hire to fix this issue this is something that's out of their control this has nothing to do with their you know being adequate or inadequate as you know console manufacturers or whatever you know as a company this is something that's just due to things out of their control it's a pandemic you I mean you can't control that i would be messed up i'd be bummed out things would be messed up for me like that i'd be i'd be you know it would affect you just think about it if it was you you know and have a heart people gosh they're like oh sony cooper they make billions of dollars uh, they have a lot of employees people who don't make billions of dollars who are affected by this so think about those people all right you're thinking about it as the as the company as a whole and you're throwing you know tomatoes at it because they're like eh, who cares you know this they still got billions of dollars they're not crying losing sleep um yeah they have employees that make regular salaries that are you know that are affected by this so these are human beings okay guys next story Sony's Jim Ryan thanks fans for their patience with PS5 shortage in anniversary message. See? 
and they go take it out they go out their way to thank fans for being patient because it's true i mean they people want to say that they're a company they have to do these things they don't have to do these things you know they can just you know be like well you know i hope they're patient we want their money but they really care because they know it's affecting people. They know people who enjoy video games and who want a PlayStation 5 console who can't get one because of the shortages. The PlayStation 5 just turned one. That's the big story. It's been a year, guys. It's already been past a year. Oh, yeah. Wow. I've had my PlayStation 5 for over a year. That means around this time last year, I was sitting inside of a motel playing PlayStation 5, hoping that crackheads and drug dealers didn't know I had this console sitting in a motel room because we were waiting for a house to be built. That was stress, going to work every day, hoping the kids locked the door and they closed the door right. And, you know, while, while I was out, because they were doing remote school, so they were in the motel room, you know, so we staggered our hours, you know, so that the adults weren't all out at the same time. We made every effort, but overlaps happened. And, you know, we have a 15 year old, so that's OK. But it was it was nerve wracking for me because, you know, I had my laptop and my PlayStation 5 sitting in there. I had other stuff, too. Oh, and in my truck, but in my in my in my car. I had a lot of stuff, but not anymore. I mean, we moved into the house, you know, we unpacked everything, but it was crazy. It was crazy times last year around this time. It was like life was so totally different, man. I feel I feel blessed and I feel appreciative and um, I don't take anything for granted. I just have to say that just, I'm, I'm I appreciate everything that I got and where I'm at right now. So I want people to feel appreciative of where you are because it could be worse. And um, if you're humble and you appreciate the small things, you may be in line for some big things, you know? So, yeah, I don't want to get peachy on here, but that's me. Like, that's how I am. That's how I talk. Leave me alone. All right. So. The PlayStation 5 just turned one and Sony marked the occasion with a blog penned by SIE Sony interactive entertainment ceo jim ryan although it offered no consolation to those who are still struggling to get their hands on the console which like i said it's out of their control there's nothing that they can do <laughs> right now yo and that sucks as a company to to for there to be nothing you can do about you know your supply shortage it's not because you have an incompetent worker who missed the deadline or anything it's because the place where you get your supplies to make your thing that that you sell they don't have people you know people working there so they can't get you as much as you thought you know as you hope they could and sometimes it takes a long time to get what they can can get to you it takes longer you know so i, I you know i understand um Ryan's message did offer reassurance that Sony is doing everything in its power to navigate the situation and ship as many units as it possibly can. Everything in their power. And we know a lot of this is out of their control, out of their power. So they're doing their best. We continue to see historic demand for PS5 and we understand the inventory constraints remain a source of frustration for many of our customers. Ryan acknowledged, rest assured that we are laser focused on doing everything in our power to ship as many units as possible. It's something we work on every day across the company and remains my top priority. Again, we appreciate your patience as we navigate through these unprecedented global challenges. Global challenges, people. Ryan's comments follow a recent Bloomberg report which claimed that Sony had to cut back its PS5 production forecast so we just talked about as component shortages continue to batter the tech and consumer electronics industries. The company had apparently hoped to produce around 16 million consoles 
but has now settled for $15 million. Sony Chief Financial Officer Hiroki Totoki reportedly revealed this information privately to investors at the end of October, citing the recent resurgence in COVID-19 cases around the globe as winter approached. Nevertheless, PS5 has managed to become the fastest selling console and is on track to meet sales targets. However, with the revised supply, it remains to be seen if Sony will have to readjust its expectations. They may. I mean, and that sucks. That does suck, man. Like, you're trying to... Like, you're like, oh, we got this momentum. Like, we can sell it. People want it. We just can't make it. Like, and we can't make it because we can't get people in these places to make these parts that we need to make it. And that sucks, man. Because they, they could. They could break every record that they've had in the past and you know sell a kajillion of these things but these things happen man that sucks so next story in this one year since it's the one year anniversary we continue with some one year news one year of ps5 playstation 5 players have racked up 4.6 billion hours of gameplay in the console's first year wow that's a lot of headshots, a lot of, um, what, what are those things called? Uh, the, they, they call for like, what, what is it? Um, I forgot what that thing is called in Call of Duty. I don't play it enough. Sorry. That's a lot of ducking and cover and shooting clickers. That's a lot of collecting bolts in Ratchet and Clank. That's a lot of jump shots in 2K. That's a lot of a lot of stuff in a lot of games. We're not going to go. <laughs> I can't go down a list of every game. That's a lot of um, Demon Slade and Demon Souls. A lot of web slings, a lot of web swings and a lot of aim um, agents knocked out and a lot of um, inmates from Rikers put back in prison escapees. You know, it's a lot of all that good stuff, you know. PlayStation 5 console is celebrating its first birthday today in many regions, which this story is from Friday, November 12th. Just so, just so you know, not, not today. This was three days ago. As such, Sony has decided to reveal some of the more interesting facts and figures for the console and its games. One of those is that players have managed to accumulate more than 4.6 billion hours of gameplay in the first year of the PS5. And over 26 million hours of those have been streamed to viewers around the world by people like me. Ding! I don't have the, the, the teeth shining sound effect when I go. Ding! I just do it with my mouth. Ding! And you don't see the, the, the light. Ding! Just imagine it. Use your imagination, people. Come on. We're creative people. Anyway, during the last 12 months, there have been many PlayStation 5 exclusive titles released, including Ratchet and Clank, Ripped Apart, Returnal, a lot of deaths in Returnal, man. Like Returnal, I have to go. I have to return to Returnal. There's a pun intended with that one because the name of the game is Returnal. Obviously, that game is super hard, and I don't know how anyone has beat that game. I must suck. Like I must just be bad because I can't. I mean, I haven't played it in months now. Because I was like, I'm not going to be, I'm playing other stuff that I can beat. Like, I'm going to finish these other games. Like, I platinum Spider-Man, and I'm super happy about that. You know, I'm, I started playing Horizon again to attempt to platinum that. Don't know if that's going to happen. Um, I have to figure out with my save file and stuff how, how I continue from my PlayStation 4 save to platinum it. But I'll figure that out. I started playing Genshin Impact. I've been doing the Silent Hill thing. I've been trying to jump into games I haven't played yet. You know, or haven't finished. So I need to finish Ratchet and Clank. I'm, I'm slacking. I keep forgetting that I didn't beat that game yet. So I have to go back and finish that. Um, and I stopped playing it so that I can play other stuff. Not because I didn't want to continue playing, but because I don't like to stay on one game when there's a bunch of other stuff. Because I'm trying to do, you know... I'm just all over the place, guys. Just bear with me, all right? Like, I'm I'm everywhere. I try to be everywhere at once, and, you know, you can't, you know? I try to be a superhero. That's why I'm Pablo Man. <laughs> 
but yeah man 12 26 million um hours streamed that's a lot of streams during the last 12 months there have been many places oh i went there De oh all okay. right returnal death loop demon souls death stranding director's cut final fantasy 7 remake integrate destruction all stars and not forgetting astro's playroom that came already installed on the console ready to show players the ins and outs of the new hardware of course there have also been plenty of multi-platform games bringing the total number of ps5 games to over 360. sony put together a list of the top 10 titles on ps5 according to gameplay hours and some may surprise you top 10. barf people barf barf what is wrong with you people Fortnite. Stop playing Fortnite, people. Play something else. Forget these battle royale games and, and play these experiences that are so much better and so much more rewarding and so much more love and effort put into them. Get off of Fortnite. Number one is Fortnite, of course. I don't why why? Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. And they say that game sucks. They literally hate that game. I hear people complain about that game anyway. FIFA. I don't know anyone. I don't know a single person. I do not know one single person who plays FIFA. How is that number three? 2K21, I understand. Assassin's Creed Valhalla? This can't be just PlayStation numbers. Like, people on PlayStations aren't playing Val Valhalla that much. No way. Destiny 2? Really? MLB The Show? Marvel, Marvel Spider-Man, Miles Morales. I need to get I need to, I need to start that game. And Demon Souls. I don't see why Demon Souls is up there in the top 10 list. It's so for I guess because you're spending a lot of time trying to finish the beat the one monster that keeps killing you over and over again. <laughs> it's like Returnal. NBA 2K22. 2K made the list twice. While most are multiplayer, constantly updating living world constantly updated living world and sports games which will obviously earn high gameplay hours some surprise single player entries earn spots on the list including marvel spider-man miles morales and demon souls sony fully intends to keep the playstation 5 going at this momentum sony interactive entertainment's president c and ceo jim ryan reiterated the company currently has 25 titles in development between the different playstation studios of those that we know about, Guerrilla Games has Horizon Forbidden West. Yeah. And some of the games have Marvel's, Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Yeah. And Marvel's Wolverine. Yeah. Naughty Dog has The Last of Us multiplayer project. Yeah. Gran Turismo 7 is coming soon from Poly Polyphony Digital. Yeah. Santa Monica Studios developing God of War Ragnarok. Yeah. More mysteriously, our new IPs in development at Ben Studio and London Studio. And there are multiple new projects at Fire Sprite, although these might not necessarily be PlayStation exclusive. Pixel Opus is developing a PS5 game in col collaboration with Sony Pictures Animation and Team Asobi is working on its most ambitious game yet. Woo! Whether they count or not, Uncharted Leg Legacy of Thieves Collection is bringing the series to new platforms and God of War is heading to PC too. Not to PC too, but you know, PC as well. No more that's it that's all the story it's on that's all to that story so yeah i'm looking forward to that and um what i do what i don't see i'm looking i'm looking through and i don't see anything about blue box studios and abandon oh we're still beating that dead horse guys stay tuned i'm not saying we have a story on it i'm just saying oh my goodness why haven't we heard anything from blue box studios regarding what well, you know what i'm gonna add that to um our discussion today but I, we'll talk about it in a second so let's put a pin on that one let's pin that one and we'll talk about that later right now dr strange 2 facing major reshoots ahead of 2022 release but why will it make its may 2022 release date the question is asked let's read the story Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is currently in the midst of significant reshoots ahead of its scheduled release on May 6, 2022. According to multiple reports, 
cast and crew on the upcoming Marvel sequel have been roped back in to work on both reshoots and additional photography six days a week until the end of the year. Jacob, stop. What are you doing? Are you sitting on my speaker? <laughs> what are you doing? It's not yet clear whether the additional filming schedule has been um, action to incorporate rewritten scenes from the movie, though most sources seem to agree that the reshoots are simply a consequence of limited actor avail availability during the initial filming period. Casey Walsh at the Comics Kid tweets, got some info on these reshoots, and what I said here is basically what's happening. Feige, I think that's how you say his name. Or Fage? I don't I don't know how to say his name. I'm sorry. Or Feige? I don't know. Is actually pleased with Raimi and the film's directions. And the film's direction. They're adding people who were busy filming a show during principal and streamlining a pivotal scene that also involves cameos. My guess would be to spend more time explaining. Yeah, we did that. Explaining and expanding the concept of the multiverse in case people haven't been watching D plus the you know Disney plus it does also sound like a lot of actors are involved and they may have had trouble getting people when they needed them. Yeah. <laughs> the reports also suggest that COVID-19 restrictions in the UK have played a part in the need for additional photography on Doctor Strange in the multiverse of madness restrictions last month that last month forced Marvel to I don't know. I don't know what they were trying to something. A large portion of its 2022 phase four release roster. I don't I don't know what word that they were trying to type there, um, but, you know, maybe your editors should do a, a quick, you know, you know, just look over the blog posts before you post it to just make sure that you don't have these kinds of errors, because that was an oversight right there. And I don't know what that's supposed to say. But yeah, Doctor Strange 2 has got some major reshoots. And would you please stop sitting on my speaker? Come here. You just, you wanted my attention until I put you in the in the podcast. I get it. You need, you need a dipe dipe change? You might. Hope it's not a stink stink. I don't want my leg to smell like a stink stink. I can't smell you right now. That's good and bad. But I can't smell it in bad. That I can't smell it because my nose is bad and I don't have that good of a sense of smell. And you may have a stink stink on my leg right now. And then my leg is going to be a stink stink. You got stink stink in your dike dike? Don't say yes because you probably don't. It's just not funny. Why are you smiling? Stop doing that with your lip. Anyway, on to the next story. Back to gaming news. Marvel's Avengers Spider-Man outfits take inspiration from classic comics. I mean, duh. I mean, they're going to do stuff that um, that was done in the Spider-Man game. Like, this is the noir outfit or the... this it, No, this might not be Spider-Noir. This might be the stealth Spider-Man one. They did that in the Spider-Man game. So you knew they was going to do that for this. The upcoming Marvel's Avengers with Great Power Hero event will add the friendly neighborhood superhero Spider-Man along with a host of new outfits to choose from exclusively for PlayStation players. Suck it, Xbox! <laughs> Publisher Square Enix and developer Crystal Dynamics showcase some of these new outfits ahead of the character's release, revealing some choice source of inspiration. Notably, many of the outfits resemble those worn in some classic Spider-Man comic books, including Spider-Man Noir, like I said, as well as the original comic series. The new free update releases exclusively to PS4 and PS5 on November 30th, 2021. It's putting pressure on me to play some more Spider-Man before then. It's what, the 15th? I got 15 days? You think in 15 days I could finish Miles Morales with a full-time job? And these crazy kids and playing Silent Hill on stream on, on Wednesday and Friday? We'll see. I don't think I will. I, I'm going to try. That's the goal. All right. Challenge accepted. With almost 60 years of Spider-Man history, picking out his outfits for Marvel's Avengers took lots of thought and planning. 
We chose looks that should satisfy Spidey fans, both new and old. Click that beautiful link below to see some of them. Hmm. Do they have pictures here? Oh, they do have pictures here. Good. All right. Starting off the collection is a suit based on Spidey's very first appearance in the Amazing Spider-Man comic series. The outfit is, faithful, is a faithful recreation of Spider-Man creator Steve Ditko's designs and is updated to look just realistic enough to fit the overall aesthetic of the game. This is... This is it? I guess that's it. There are plenty of other outfits to choose from. The Marvel's Avengers outfit is an original design created specifically for the game and highlights Peter Parker's technological prowess and know-how. The same suit appeared in the official reveal trailer for the character and features some pretty interesting high-tech design choices echoing those from recent Spider-Man movies. True. All right, so we're not going to go through all of them um, right now because let's, let's try not to spoil too much of the outfits. I want to be surprised, you know, that I mean, hopefully I play it. I still have to play um, the Wakanda update. I still haven't played Marvel Avengers in a while, but I like the game. I started playing um, a replay of it on the because I played it first on the PS4, but then when it came out for the PS5 and the PS5 came out with it, um, I played it on PS5 and it looked so much better. So I start I started it over and um I'm, I was enjoying it. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens happen. Right? Next story. This is one of those um stories that um of course I'm going to play because um and we're going to talk about because it's annoying. Because this was something that we were promised wasn't going to happen. Legacy stuff would still come to PlayStation 5. But this, though, has not been officially confirmed, you know, and it could be a bluff, you know, just to get hype for Xbox, you know, because they have nothing else to get hype for. In the interview, because it was also Xbox's, like, Xbox had a anniversary or whatever. I don't know what. <laughs> Excuse me. I think it's the 20 year anniversary of the console. Like, as you know, you know, from the first big Duke controllers and the ugly first console. Phil Spencer sees the Elder Scrolls 6 exclusivity as being similar to Starfield, not expected to come to PlayStation. Which, I mean, it bothers me, not because I was planning on getting it, because, frankly, just being honest, I wasn't. I'm not big on Bethesda games. Um, I do like the Fallout games, but Fallout 76 was very disappointing. Um, I've owned um, Elder Scrolls games, like, I'll get it if it's free on the store and stuff like that, but I'm not itching to play you know, Elder Scrolls games, not no knock on them like they're bad or anything. You know, my brother who's here watching Blue Dev, he loves the, those games. And I'm pretty sure this is disappointing news. Though it hasn't been officially confirmed, we'll, we'll read what happened. Fans have been left wondering what will happen to the Elder Scrolls 16 now that Bethesda has become an Xbox studio. While Bethesda has remained non-committal, Phil Spencer's latest interview with GQ Magazine states he views that game's exclusivity as being similar situ as being a similar situation to that of Starfield. In other words, the game may well be exclusive to Xbox and PC, though it's not about punishing any other platform. They quoted him. Starfield was confirmed to be an Xbox console exclusive during E3 2021, a decision for which Bethesda's Pete Hines later apologized. Bethesda is apologizing. But it's Xbox, who doesn't care about players, said, yeah, suck it. Which, so, which is fine. I, I mean, it is what it, it is, what it is, whatever. I, I wasn't super hyped about Starfield. I could care less. The reason for the decision was so the studio could streamline development and become more focused. This is the thinking behind making The Elder Scrolls 6 an, an Xbox exclusive title 2. 
As Spencer explained, it's not about punishing any other platform. Like I fundamentally, fundamentally believe all of the platforms can continue to grow. But in order to be on Xbox, I want us to be able to bring the full complete package of what we have. And that would be true when I think about Elder Scrolls 6. That would be true when I think about any of our franchises. What he means by the full package is incorporating everything Xbox Live has to offer, including Game Pass, Cloud Gaming, Friends List, and Save States. This, of course, then makes it more difficult for games to be ported to other consoles that don't offer these features or even offer separate specific features of their own like the DualSense controller enhancements. Or even offer separate specific features. Oh yeah. I mean, if you don't want to put in the DualSense stuff, man, don't put the don't put the DualSense stuff in. It's not our fault you are technologically behind. Oh, we got beef, we got a strong console. No, nah, really. I don't not not at all. Um, yeah, you know. <laughs> you're not really. You know, you didn't want to do it, you just wanted a regular controller that takes double A batteries like you have for the past 20 years. You know, that's that's your business. While Spencer was more upfront about the potential for the Elder Scrolls 6 exclusivity to be similar to that of Starfield, Bethesda has done its best to keep the hopes of PlayStation, PlayStation fans up. Todd Howard previously said it would be hard to imagine the Elder Scrolls 6 being a console exclusive, but also refused to be drawn into any further comment. Microsoft is currently honoring the, exclusive, uh, the exclusivity deals that Bethesda had already agreed with PlayStation, like Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo, but said any future decisions will be made on a case-by-case -case basis. This is something that, you know, this is one of those cases where Elder Scrolls games have been on a bunch of consoles forever. I can see a new IP like Starfield that has never come out before. There's never been a Starfield before. This isn't a reboot, a reimagining. This is Starfield. This is the first time they're making a Starfield game. I can understand that lame game. I mean, that game going to the whack box um, exclusively because it's new. Well, when you got a player base already, a whole huge fan base and following, we've been following this thing since PlayStation 3 years. That's the earliest we've had all the scrolls. Yep. PlayStation 3 years. Right? And we're at PlayStation 5 now. That's three console life cycles now. We're in when the third console life cycle where we could enjoy where people who are still playing Skyrim on their PS5, you know. That's a lot of years and a lot of people, a lot of hours, a lot of time, a lot of investment, a lot of um, cons where they went and, you know, dressed up in Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls cosplay and, you know, a lot of blog posts, a lot of videos made on YouTube, a lot of live streams on Twitch and YouTube and all these other platforms. A lot of that stuff. Where people on PlayStation have been very invested in PlayStation was their biggest, you know, platform before because they, you know, PlayStations, there were way more PlayStations out in the world. So more people had their hands on a PlayStation. So more people able to buy this game, their games. Now, I don't know what their, you know, sales were like, you know, going across, but PlayStation is a major platform and these are legacy titles, even though it's a new iteration in the series, it's still a series that people have grown to love and attach, they're attached to it. And for you to disappoint fans by putting it exclusively on your whack console that nobody's buying, that's kind of a kick in the butt of everybody and spit in the face of everybody who's loved this series. And I know this is an Xbox only decision. This isn't a Bethesda decision. If it was up to Bethesda, um, this game would definitely come to PlayStation. So it doesn't say anything definitive, you know, but it is a major concern for those who are looking forward to Elder Scrolls six and who are, you know, big fans of that series and those games, because it's, there's a possibility that if you own a PlayStation, 
you may not be able to play this game unless you get a PC. Um, you're definitely not going to cross over to Xbox. That would be stupid. And I know you wouldn't want to do that. If you're a PlayStation loyalist, you're not going to do that just for one game. You'll get over it. You'll, you'll buy a PC first. Like I did. I have a PC. So if it does come exclusive, you know, and it comes down to it that is that serious, you know, I may buy it on my PC. But, you know, I'd have to really consider it, you know, like I haven't bought Deathloop. Even though it's a PlayStation 5 exclusive, it's still a Bethesda game and they're owned by Xbox. So I have this stubbornness to me that I, I'm just I'm just not I'm refusing to 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 invest in, in them because of stuff like this. You know, PlayStation, you know, PlayStation games are exclusive to PlayStation from jump, you know, and somebody pointed out one game. I forgot it was a I forgot what game it was that they said that um, PlayStation bought out. Uh, oh, for Final Fantasy or whatever. For the remake, well, their in-house studio made the game, so of course it would be exclusive, you know. It said the remake for Final Fantasy VII, like they played it on other consoles when it when it first came out, you know. So how come it hasn't come to any other console but PlayStation? Well, because the remake was ambitious, and the only other console it would come out on, you know, the, I think it originally came out on like the the Nintendo era, right? Wasn't that when when did I don't know when that game came out? Don't quote me, don't ever quote me on things like this because I could just be shooting in the sky and not hitting anything. But um I believe hey we can let's do let's do some quick research. Um let's do Google, let's do Final Fantasy 7. Not the remake. 1997. It was made for the PlayStation. Hold, hold, give me a second. Where else did you play? Um, So it was originally started for the um, Nintendo. Started for Nintendo, right? It came out for the Switch and Xbox. What? So what the heck was it? Oh, the original one came out on PlayStation. And then it was on, you know, they put it on Switch and Xbox One is what, what this is saying. I don't know how accurate that is. Let me see. Hmm, Squaresoft. That was when they were Squaresoft before they became Square Enix. Yeah, it, when it became successful, they put it on other on other platforms. So that's when the Switch got in. Um, it went on Android and iOS and Xbox, you know, Windows version, or whatever. And they're saying that, oh, because of that, then um, the remake should have went to other. No, it was originally, you know, maybe they'll eventually. I mean, they do that. They put PlayStation puts its games on PC and stuff later. You know, but it's not like you had this big following from from Jump Street. I mean, these games released Elder Scrolls games released on all these platforms from initial. They didn't port them after a while because of the success and threw a bone and said, hey, PlayStation can have Elder Scrolls as well. Here's an Elder Scrolls game. No, man, like. That's not how it happened. So for them to not put Elder Scrolls 6 on a PlayStation is kind of that's kind of whack. So hopefully that doesn't happen that way. So let's move on. Let's 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 stop giving them all this light. 
Let's 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 keep it rolling. Name of this song is Keep Rolling. Let's keep it rolling. Rainbow Six Extraction release date confirmed. Comes with Buddy Pass and lower price. Hold up. Let's turn this volume down some. I really want to get into what this is. What is this saying? Buddy Pass. Hmm. Is that how like um was the game a way out? I think that was the name of it. And it takes two. Those two games like that. Like that. Let's read. Ubisoft has confirmed the Rainbow Six Extraction release date will be January 20th and both the standard and deluxe editions of the game have also received lower price points. Along with the confirmation came the announcement of a cross, ooh, excuse me, cross platform buddy pass that will allow owners of the game to invite a couple of friends to enjoy the experience for free. Nice. The buddy pass actually takes form of two buddy pass tokens each of which can be sent to a friend on playstation 5 playstation 4 the xbox consoles and pc once the token is redeemed the friend can play with their buddy and their squad for free for up to 14 days although they won't have access to the assignments M maelstrom protocol ranked mode and the in-game store any progression those friends make during the trial period will be transferred when they purchase the game. Oh, so it's it's not like those other games. This is temporary. Oh, I get it. That's pretty cool, though. There are two editions of the game up for pre-order right now. The standard edition will now be priced at $39.99, down from $59.99. Meanwhile, the deluxe edition will now cost $49.99, down from $79.99. And includes the Noxious Touch Pack, Obs Obscura Pack, React Strike Pack, 4 XP boosts, and a 10% discount for the in-game shop. Regardless of which edition you decide to pre-order, you'll get the Orbital Decay Cosmetic Bundle as a pre-order bonus. Those who have played Rainbow Six Siege and linked their Ubisoft account to both games will benefit from the United Front Bundle. This includes two uniform sets, two weapon skins, and two charms for use in each game. It will also unlock the, the 18 extraction operations for use in Siege. Well, um, operators for use in Siege. It'll unlock them, but you'll still have to purchase them, right? Because that's how Siege works, which is stupid. Like, where's the free operators, man? I don't know. I could be wrong, but I, I haven't... Like, come on, man. Where's the pre-operators? I haven't seen many or any. The game will be released on January 20th, although we already knew that after Ubisoft accidentally leaked the release date on their own website. There will be full cross-play, cross-save, and cross-progression across all platforms, meaning it doesn't matter if you want to play the game on multiple platforms or if you want to play with friends on other consoles. Nice. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. So I'm happy to hear that. And we're going to keep rolling. Let's go to the next story. Sizable amount of these Rainbow Six Extractions post-launch content will be free. The roadmap is released. More Rainbow Six Extraction news. Let's keep it rolling. Ubisoft has announced that a sizable amount of Rainbow Six Extraction's post-launch content will be completely free, and the game will come with an evolving endgame. Maelstrom Protocol is a weekly challenge mode designed for the most skilled Rainbow Six players who will be tasked with getting through nine subzones, each with increasing difficulty, tougher enemies, less resources, and shorter time limits. At each checkpoint, squads must choose to their to either extract to bank their points or attempt to push to the end ubisoft explained earning points will secure a place for challengers in up to four classes from bronze to silver to gold platinum and even diamond class each rewarding players with special headgear and react credits then there are crisis events and assignments each crisis events are described as limited time game changing events with different themes they'll add a new operator to your roster or new pro protein enemy to defeat the first event is called spillover 
and it will have players wipe out mass colonies of an evolved sprawl while being hunted by Archaeans. Completing the event will reward players with exclusive React tech, new cosmetics, and new lore. Assignments, on the other hand, are weekly modes with gameplay modifiers. For example, Veteran mode involves no HUD, limited ammo, and friendly fire enabled. Wrote Ubisoft, at launch, players can tackle both Maelstrom Protocol and weekly assignments with crisis events becoming available soon after. Rainbow Six Extraction will launch on January 22nd. Yes, we know that. Nice. Next story, let's move on. Yeah. Take Two likens GTA franchise to James Bond movies and believes GTA will be long lasting like Bond franchise. I mean, isn't it long lasting? Take Two Interactive CEO Strauss Zelnick has likened Grand Theft Auto to the James Bond film franchise and has said that he believes GTA will last a long time just like Bond which has been around since the 1950s. Oh, shit, yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> During the Jeffrey's Virtual Global Interactive Entertainment Conference, transcribed by Video Games Chronicle, Zelnick was quizzed about the shelf life of Take-Two's franchises, in response to which Zelnick said that GTA, Red Dead, and NBA are three franchises that will continue selling for a long time. Of course. They didn't say NFL, though. That's That sucks for Madden. If it's really, really great, it will keep going. I don't know if you saw it. I just saw the new Bond film. That was great. And you would like every franchise to be James Bond. There are a precious few entertainment franchises of any sort that fall into that category. But they do exist. And I think GTA is one of them. I think Red Dead is one of them. NBA is obviously one of them because the game of basketball will continue to exist. Aw, oh, Jakey's falling asleep. Sleepy Jakey. Zelnick added that he's against annual releases of non-sports titles because of the risk of burnout and carried on using his Bond example by saying that he will continue to watch every Bond movie, but not if they release every few months. <laughs> I've always said that annualizing non-sports titles runs the risk of burning out intellectual properties, even if it's good. So we take the time to make something that we think is incredibly phenomenal and we also rest titles intentionally so that there is pent up demand for that title so that it's a special event. I go and see a Bond film because there isn't another one in two months. I'm going to see every Bond film. GTA continues to make bank for take two. A new game is inevitable, but it's unlikely to release anytime soon. But that's the thing. He's speaking of it like, you know, we hold off these titles so we can build demand. But dude, Res oh, Res <laughs> Grand Theft Auto 5 came out in 2013. It is going to be 2022. Nine years is too much time between new games. And you're re-releasing the same game again next year. So we're not, it's going to be like 11 years before we get, you know, in between these GTA games. And that's that's unacceptable, man. Like, you don't have to wait that long. Bond films come out sooner than that, man. So if you're following the Bond, like, um, the way Bond is going and you're following the Bond formula, then you're messing up. Like, Bond films come out way, off, way more often than that. In the past nine years, we've had several Bond films. So you might want to fix that, guys. Next story. This was one that, you know, it, it frustrates me because I, I've i been looking forward to Battlefield's game and so much news is making me not want to buy this thing. So much of the things, their decisions, their choices is making me not want it. Oh, look at that cute face. Look at that face. Stop doing that with your lip. <laughs> Battlefield 2042 won't have voice chat at launch, but will come with a number of technical issues. So it's not going to have something good, but it will come with plenty of things bad. That's terrible. Come on, man. You haven't had a game in a while, and this is what you do? I was hyped for this game. I really wanted this, but no campaign. It it's make. I don't want it. I don't know if I'm going to buy Battlefield. They kind of ruined it for me. That's, that's frustrating. 
it looks cool and all but i'm i'm not one of those guys who likes to play you know multi multiplayer games that much if this game comes at um on sale and it's like 75 percent off i might pick it up 90 percent off i'll pick it up but i'm not buying 2042 um on release i'm not i'm not I'm just not into those kind of games like that. Only thing that would make me buy this game is if my friends all want to buy it and we all play together like we used to, but we don't play like we used to, you know, as much. And I don't think any of them are buying Battlefield. I'm maybe one of, I, I'm not banking on it. Battlefield 2042 should have been delayed again, reads a blunt headline from the Washington Post, Mike Hume, who's joined by many others and being surprised by the state in which the game launched early access is live now it has only just been discovered that battlefield 2042 does not have a voice chat feature at present a glaring omission in a modern multiplayer shooter which yeah that doesn't make any sense you you don't have a campaign you're straight up just multiplayer how do you not have voice chat i know there's parties you know playstation parties and i don't know what xbox does over there where you can have voice chat with your friends but when you're playing with randos like if you're the only one who has the game out of your friends or you don't have friends you game with and you play with randos like you you can't talk to anybody that's stupid how are you supposed to have a squad based game with no communication according to players and reviewers the lack of voice chat is most noticeable in 32 player hazard zone where you're in a squad of four battling other squads electronic arts told the washington post that most people use applications like discord and console party chat features to communicate so it'll add in-game voice chat shortly after launch one problem if you don't have friends playing battlefield 2042 and you're queuing up solo to match with players outside of your friends list then you'll be stuck using the quick chat menu to communicate with your team which will naturally then be at a disadvantage against players who are verbally communicating yikes yikes exactly my sentiment exactly yikes yes we have discord yes we have party chat in in the consoles but like i said i said it before i read it and that rhymes if you don't have friends playing the game and you're relying on you know the game's chat feature like games normally have like this multiplayer shooter games this one doesn't have it you're gonna be silent you're gonna have silence you're not gonna be able to communicate and what you're supposed to type in your chat oh hold up let me let me put a menu in front of my screen of letters and stuff for the keyboard and type that in or if i have a keyboard let me take my hands off my controller type in oh there's a guy on left there wait for the response the guy's gone already and then you have to type in your response of oh he went all in this direction you have to wait for their response you're dead like that's stupid Battlefield 2042 may not come with in-game voice chat at launch, but it does come with a plethora of technical issues. This is where it gets even worse. EA acknowledged as much and wrote that while DICE has worked extremely hard to get Battle 2042 into a smooth and rewarding to, into as smooth and rewarding a state as possible, there is no launch ever without its flaws, and you might still encounter some bugs and issues during these first few weeks. A lengthy list of known issues is available on EA's website for those interested. Um, yeah. Let's see. Where's the list of issues? I'm trying to see if they have the less. Oh, here we go. All platforms. We have identified some server instances of rubber banding when the big silos on breakaway are destroyed. On the mode breakthrough, players will be unable to spawn on B1 while it is contested. Bridge construction states have a tendency to desync if the player joins at a late stage in the, in the round. On the mode, breakthrough players will be unable to spawn on B1 while it is contested. 
Just some rare instances of visual flickering while playing on discarded. With within the weather station of the manif of manifest, while the building is in a destroyed state, there are rare instances that can cause severe flickering of our lighting systems, which has potential to trigger those with photosensitive conditions. Wow, that's a bad one. We are aware of some miscellaneous issues causing players to become stuck within world geometry. Several of these are being fixed for a patch after launch. Please continue to report any scenario where you get stuck in the maps. In some situations, bots are unable to revive down players. We're aware of ranger malfunctioning when ordered over some obstacles. And we are working to improve this. I mean, this list goes on and on and on and on. And on and on. When I got to sit here and read all that, like this is a big list, and that sucks for them. So they they uh they need to fix that. So let's move on. Jakey is falling. This is the funny one, and this this is like they they they've they've been through a lot, but it's their it's their fault. So Activision Blizzard. No longer the most valuable U.S. gaming company after rise in value of Roblox Corporation shares. Roblox. This is my problem with people is that they play these crappy games so much. Roblox, Fortnite. Like, I'm not saying I don't play Roblox. I mean, it's been a long time since I played Roblox. And it's not, I'm not saying that I don't enjoy things in Roblox. But as a game, it's not as good as, you know, you know, compared to how much people play. It doesn't it doesn't add up, you know, for for this company to, you know, be. It's saying that this this is like, um, you know, come on, I don't want to get sick. He's not sick. He, he, he's gotten over his little cough. That's, that's just a, a normal kid's coughing when they're asleep. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, as much as people play Roblox, like the game isn't that good to be playing it that much. Like, I can see you having fun playing it every now and then. Like, it's one of those in between games, games that you play, you go back to. It's not like a Minecraft. A Minecraft is a game where, you know, it's sold a crazy amount, and I understand. <laughs> Excuse me, Roblox is not one of those. Like it, it gets annoying. And it's that you know people can create their own games, but they're they're just parodying other games, and a lot of it is done poorly. Oh, and he pulled out my. <laughs> Sorry, I can't I can't hear my stuff. I'm trying to lay him down. <laughs> All right, I'm plugged back in. But, you know, Activision was the most valuable gaming company. How, though? I mean, I guess because of Call of Duty. You okay, man? No. Oh. Seems like he did pee in his diaper, though. I could smell that. I'm gonna change them before I, you know, before after the stream. I'm almost done here. Activision Blizzard has seen a drop in the value of their shares, and they are no longer the most valuable company gaming company in the U.S., according to GameSpot. A recent rise in the value of Roblox Corporation shares have sent it straight to the top of the list, while consistent decreases in share values for Activision see it drop to second place. EA remains steadfast in third place. While Roblox Corporation merely operates the Roblox platform on which other developers can make their gains, it is still considered to be a gaming company in many valuation lists. The company only went public in March 2021, but was rated highly enough to be the third most valuable U.S. gaming company behind EA and Activision. However, a successful company earnings report released earlier this week saw its shares and in values increase by 40% to give it a market cap of more than 62 billion. On the other hand, 
Activision's stock values have recently declined following the delay of Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2. And the company's market cap sits at $52 billion. This is in addition to the steady decline the company has suffered since June when allegations started to emerge regarding sexual harassment and discrimination in many of their studios. After years of investigations, the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, saw fit to issue subpoenas for company executives, which included Chief Executive Officer Bobby Lee Kotick, in the hope they would finally answer questions about how the company has handled these allegations. Activation's own conduct hasn't helped the situation. They have been accused of destroying evidence related to the SEC investigation and have attempted to postpone, postpone the lawsuit, a move that was ultimately unsuccessful. They have made a number of public gestures to deflect some of the criticism, including recently firing 20 employees and reprimanding even more in response to the toxic work culture allegations. They've also renamed in-game characters like Overwatch's Jesse McCree, who is not known as Cole, who is who is now known as Cole Cassidy after his former namesake was fired for misconduct following the filing of the lawsuit. So yeah, they just can't catch a break. I mean, but you know, they had all that craziness going on and they didn't do anything about it. And then they try to cover it up and do all this crazy stuff. Like, no, nah, no, nah, man, you fix it. If you have a sincere heart that, you know, that these things are happening, you're mad and you're upset and you want to apologize and you want to make it right. You don't destroy evidence and do all that craziness, no. You just look even more guilty. Look like you knew the whole time. Moving on to our last story, which is looks like two stories, but it's one. We're into to some sports news. Oh, oh yeah, we did. I did say that we were gonna throw some blue box in. So let's 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 go to Google. And let's let's see what's new with Blue Box. Blue Box Gaming Studios. Okay, so this is their Twitter account. Let's go to their tweets and replies. Um, no, let's just do their tweets because the replies are going to come from other people. Nothing. They have tweeted nothing since I read this a message from the human beings. We read that before. They have tweeted nothing since then. They have put up this photo as their banner, abandoned prologue. Now, do we sit here and pick apart this picture? Should we sit and stare at this picture for a little bit and pick it apart a little bit? See if we find anything revealing in it. Or do we just say, hey, they got nothing going on. They apparently have the prologue um, played. Oh, I know what we can do. Where is this guy? Uh, what's his name? Um, Hassan Karaman. He... I'm probably misspelling it. Let's see. Um, let's go to my profile. And Hassan. Let's see if we find his name. I think I followed him. 
I don't know how to spell his name, apparently, because it didn't come up. Or did he delete his Twitter? That's a that's a possibility, guys. That's a possibility because it should be coming. Oh, gosh. There it goes. October 11th. We're, we're, this is November 15th. Um, August, yes, he hasn't tweeted in forever as well. And Jacob is snoring now. Yes, he hasn't tweeted in forever either. Very fishy stuff going over there at Blue Box Gaming Studios. But they do have, um, like I said, they do have that that picture here up with the prologue, which hasn't, you know, it's not live right now as we speak. They would they'd have tweeted it. But they, um, you know, that could mean that the prologue should, should be coming soon, should be playable soon. But I don't know. This floor looks, you know, it looks it looks like it's wet. It looks like there's water and mud ish kind of thing. But who knows? I don't know. I don't know what this thing in the middle of the screen is under prologue. I don't I don't know if that that's part of the picture. Yeah. So I don't know. There's something there and I can't tell what it is. But, you know, I let somebody who's more, um, who's better at these things, figuring out, like pulling things out of these pictures and whatnot than I am. I'll let them figure that out if there's anything to it, you know, because apparently they be using stock footage from other stuff, just, you know, placeholders or whatever. So I don't know. They're weird. And we haven't heard anything from them since mid-October, early October. And we're now mid-November and nothing, no updates on their app or their Twitter or anything. So I don't know. Blue Box Gaming Studios is like, but moving forward, we talk about yesterday's NBA scores because I care about the NBA because my bowls are relevant. The Spurs took on the Lakers in L.A. and were defeated 106-114. to 114. DeJounte Murray for the Spurs had 22 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists. Hit the triple dub. Oh, yeah. While Anthony Davis for the Lakers had 34 points, 15 rebounds, and 6 assists in, in victory. The Bucks were defeated by the Atlanta... The Milwaukee Bucks were defeated by the Atlanta Hawks. 100 to 120, clean 20 point victory. Well, Giannis Antetokounmpo had 26 points, five rebounds, and six assists for the Bucks. While Trey Young for the Hawks had 42 points, eight rebounds, and 10 assists. Two rebounds shy of the triple dub. Let him grab the ball, guys. Two rebounds. Help your teammate out. While surprisingly and frustratingly, the Warriors were sent to their second defeat of the season. By the Charlotte Hornets. We couldn't do this. That couldn't be us. We got shellacked by the Warriors. They beat us by like 26 or something like that. The Warriors were defeated in Charlotte 102 to 106. While Steph Curry had 24 points, 6 rebounds, and 10 assists. Steph Curry had 24 points in 3-pointers alone against us. Maybe even more than that. Miles Bridges of the, of the Hornets had 22 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists. 102 to 106. The Warriors are now 11 and 12, while the Hornets are 8 and 7. The Suns defeated the Rockets 115 to 89. JaVel McGee for the Suns had 19 points, 14 rebounds, and one assist. While for the Rockets, Alper, uh, Alperin Sengun, this is 10 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists. This is the play. They're 1 and 12. I don't even know who this guy is. The Rockets are like that is called reset. Like they hit the reset, but they got created players like like 60 overalls on their team right now. One and twelve. Who is this guy? I don't know who this guy is. I'm sorry, no disrespect. He's an NBA player. He's better than a lot of people. But my goodness. They lost 115 to 89. The Nets beat the Thunder by 24 points. 120 to 96 in 
OKC, Kevin Durant against his original team, which technically wasn't his original team, it was the um, Seattle Supersonics, but they relocated and changed their name to the OKC Thunder. So technically, it's his first team, but um, he had 33 points and eight rebounds and four assists for the Nets. While Shay or Shy Gilgis Alexander had 23.6 rebounds and two assists for OKC. The Trailblazers were defeated by the Nuggets 95 to 124. Wow. While Anthony Simmons for this. What did, did um. I gotta check the box score on that. Damian Lillard didn't play. Oh, no Lillard. What happened with Lillard? Does it say? There's no there's no story on that. Oh. Well, no Lillard. So I can see why they lost. Um, Anthony Simmons, 16 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, while Nikola Jokic, the Joker, had 28 points, 9 rebounds, 9 assists for the Nuggets. Shy of 1 rebound and 1 assist from a triple-double. So close, man. So close. But yet so far. Because there's, you know, it's over. I mean, you can't do it now. Um, my Chicago Bulls, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, defeated the LA Clippers in LA 100 to 90 with DeMar DeRozan leading the leading the charge. No pun intended. We are the Bulls. 35 points, seven rebounds, and five assists. While Paul George for the Clippers had 27 points, 11 rebounds, and four assists for the Clippers. The Bulls are now nine and four, and the Clippers are eight and five. We were both eight and four starting that game, and one had to win, one had to lose, and we were the victors. Which brought the standings, which is probably updated now because some teams played, and we haven't. We were just starting. So in the Eastern Conference, the standings go: the Wizards are ten and three; they're number one. The Nets are ten and four; they're number two. And the Bulls are nine and four; they're number three. With the Heat at nine and five at number four, and the Cavs at nine and six at five, and the Knicks are eight and six at the sixth spot. And the Sixers are eight and six at the seventh spot. The Hornets are eight and seven at the eighth spot. The Raptors are seven and seven, and the Celtics are seven and seven, tied for ninth and tenth, respectively. And we'll go on with the Milwaukee Bucks, who are the 11th spot, 6 and 8. That's going to change. The Hawks, 6 and 9, that's going to change. I think I think we're going to see it a little bit more. I think the Cavs are going are gonna to fall. And the Bucks are going to rise. The Hawks are going to rise. I think maybe um, Toronto will fall. And Hawks and the Bucks will be in those positions as well. It's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough making it into the, you know, what the Wizards are doing right now is like, how? I don't know if that'll keep up either. They're number one in the East right now, 10 and three. Um, They're tied for number two in the NBA with the Phoenix Suns. The Warriors are 11 and two. The Suns are 10 and three. The Mavericks are nine and four. The Nuggets are nine and five. The Jazz are eight and five. The Clippers are eight and five. The Lakers are eight and six. The Grizzlies are seven and seven with the Kings being six and eight. And also the Trailblazers are tied for ninth and 10th respectively at six and eight. Both conferences have six and um, um, nine and 10th spot with the same record, which is expected around this time of the year. It's early in the season. These things are gonna change. Things are gonna change. But the Thunder, the five and eight, Timberwolves four and nine, Spurs. The worst team right now is the eleven, the one and thirteen. Now, so they lost tonight. The one and thirteen Rockets. They're the worst in the league. Yep, they are the worst in the league, which is sad. Very, very sad. They're on a twelve-game losing streak. So they lost their first game. They won their second game and have lost every game since. Sad, sad, sad. You see this this Bulls jacket here? I want it. I want it so bad for my trip to Chicago. So I'm I'm trying to figure out how to buy it. It's 250 bucks. I don't normally like to spend that much in one shot. I do have a pair of sneakers that I'm going to sell 
that would help with me buying this. I don't like to drop that much money on a jacket or anything if I can help it. But this coat is so beautiful and um, it's for my 40th birthday and I will be in Chicago in the United Center. So I have to have this, like I feel like I have to have this jacket or something like this. I haven't found anything that looks as good as this. This looks real, I really like this. It's got all the championships on the back. This is exactly the jacket that I want to walk into the United Center wearing. No question. You feel me? So I'm thinking about that one. I'm thinking about that one very much. I really like it. I don't know if you can see my cursor going over it, circling it like crazy, but it's there. I don't, I don't want to click on the link. It's, it's frustrating looking at it. Um, and I'm like, I want to buy it. I just want to click it and buy it. I have the money to buy it, but it's like, you know, I got to think about responsibilities first. So responsibilities first, but I'm, I'm figuring, I'm trying to figure a way to get this jacket. I really want this jacket. This jacket is nice. Really nice. Anybody out there want to drop some bits, or donate some cash, you know, you know, as a tip here on Twitch, you can do that or, you know, send out like 20 subscriptions. You know what I'm saying? Donate 40 subscriptions, you know, <laughs> give people who come, you know, subscriptions. Just do just do it random. Just do it. Just go for it. You know, make people come and then I get that money and that helps with the jacket. See, it works. <laughs> but that is the last of the stories for the evening i am so happy i'm i'm mean, not so happy that we're done but you know i gotta put this kid he's like falling asleep on my lap he is really hot he's making my lap hot and i gotta change his diaper he peed in his diaper i could smell that but thank you guys for st for tuning in thank you guys for sticking around and hanging out with me and spending your time with me whether you're watching this live or you're sitting there on youtube watching it when i inevitably post it i will try to be more prompt than i have i posted last week's episode yesterday um i think it was yesterday i hope to do this one um sooner so i'm gonna try to get it done as soon as possible maybe i'll start working on it now and have it up by tomorrow i doubt that because you know it is late and i do work early in the morning but you know we'll figure it out um like i said you can subscribe here um make sure you follow at least um and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel my youtube channel is the dad level make sure you like share subscribe to all my videos check click the bell for notifications you can click on the play level podcast playlist and watch all my podcasts um they are fun to watch i you know it's a lot of old information now but it is stuff that's still relevant there are still some stuff i talk about that I haven't released maybe there's some stuff that um will spark something in your head you know come by for a podcast and we can we can chat so come live on on twitch on mondays usually monday night around 9 p.m i i do my play level podcast if it's not on monday then it's on tuesday around the same time and you guys come by and we'll talk gaming we'll talk sports we'll talk tech you know whatever you know we'll have discussions i'd love to have discussions with people about about things you know i find stories i talk about the stories and if there's no one to talk to about these things nobody decides to want to have a conversation i'm fine with that but if you do that'll be awesome that'll be cool we sit and we chat about these things um and i can get someone else's perspective on some of these stories that i talk about but nonetheless um make sure you do like share subscribe and comment and do all that get that youtube algorithm going so that it gets out to more people more people can enjoy my videos and more people will be um directed here to my twitch to come enjoy the twitch and like i said if you don't subscribe it's all it's all good but it, it'll help every little bit helps it helps with the stream you know getting the stream looking and running good and helps me be to be able to do more and present more stuff to you um and you know money helps like like i said i'm going on a trip in february um for my birthday my 40th birthday i'm going to united center to watch a basketball game and you know it'll help my trip you know be more memorable and more fun and you know doing something loving and kind for someone like that you know for their 40th birthday making it more special how more rewarding can you get you know you know hook a brother up you know 
because I do want that jacket. You know, I I just want to go in there with the presence. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm I've been a Bulls fan since '87. You know, like I've been I was five years old. You know, I'm dedicated through all the years, through all the ups and downs. So, you know, from the Michael Jordans and the Scottie Pippins to the Nocionis and the Dengs and the Roses, and you know, all all the all the the Caffies and the Simpkins, the Dickie Simpkinses, and <laughs> all the all the years throughout, man, we've had you know Jalen Rose, you know Ben Wallace, you know we. You know, we had Jamal Crawford, Jay Crossover, you know, but all these years, man, like, you know, we've, I've, I've been with, I've been a Bulls fan since, you know, a kid and, you know, it's, it's been my dream to go to United Center and I can't wait to be there just to, you know, see that building up close and personal, be inside and stuff. So I'm excited. So, you know, if you guys can help make that more memorable, that would be even better. But I'm out of here. Thank you for tuning in. Each and every Monday or Tuesday, we do this podcast. And I also live stream on Wednesdays and Fridays. And, um, you know, pending, you know, that, you know, not pending. Pending is the wrong word. Barring that nothing out of the ordinary happens, I will be here on Wednesdays and Fridays around the same time to live stream. I've been playing Silent Hill, so I'm playing Silent Hill 1 now. I'm doing my playthrough of that. And I'm playing that on a PlayStation 2. So that is very nostalgic. I didn't need backwards compatibility to be able to play these games and to experience them on live stream. Even though people say, oh, these games, they look and play better. They get up res and all this stuff. It's all good. I'm playing it as it was meant to be played, as I played it back in the day. That's You can't get more, nostal- more nostalgic than that. And I'm using the, the same hardware. Um, I could be playing this one on a PS1. I might just do that. I might just fire it up on my PS1 just to get fully, you know, nostalgic on them. Because I can. I can do it. It will work. I hope it'll work. I'll test it out. If I remember to switch the console from the PS2 to the PS1, um, I'll do that. I have the memory card that I can just quickly swap from one console to the other. So that's, that's no issue. That's no biggie. But yeah, so see you guys on Wednesday playing Silent Hill 1. And thank you again for tuning in. I'm Papa Man 44. And as all as I always say, peace and love, y'all. I'm out.